book, I, I started hysterically crying. And I, I'm not a very emotional person. I don't cry very often. And this was like a real like, oh, this is this is happening. And like, I've always known it to be true, but to have it said by her, to have it said on this national platform, it was just like, oh, the world's, the world's gonna catch on, which is part of the reason I love pop culture. It's part of the reason I love like everything. And to have it be done totally authentic, right? Like you could tell when someone's being authentic. So like that was an authentic moment from Rachel Ray. And you're like, I feel this and there you go. And now you're crying. Well, in this, in this show, you know, I've watched a few episodes, you know, like you make Iraqi salmon and you make lamb meatballs and, you know, cardamom snickerdoodle. Like, do you have a favorite food or dessert to cook? Like, what are your favorites? I love it all. It depends on what I'm craving. That's why the show, everyone like tries to distill it down to one thing. And it's like, it's just me. It's very New York. There are influences of, of, of Ashkenazi food, Middle Eastern food, Italian food, like yeah, American, just like Americana, like all of it is incorporated because that's kind of the fun of like, I never want to be pigeonholed in anything. So being able to really offer perspective in that of how to, start to play around with maybe cuisines or ingredients that you're unfamiliar with and find ways to bridge them to the comfort foods that you know and love is such a, it's such a great opportunity to like broaden your horizons. What about people who watch this show who still say, you know, it says Jake's Jake makes it easy, but you know, for you, it's easy. Like what if someone's watching and they're like, man, this just still seems overwhelming. What advice would you have for them? Don't take yourself so seriously. It's a you problem. It's a it's a hundred percent it's a you problem. Everything is easy. Life is easy. Like you like like life is as easy as you make it. So if you want if you wanna make cooking difficult, then it will be difficult. If you wanna make it easy, it will be easy because it's not that deep. You, like we're making dinner. The the goal is is that you're gathering people you love at the table and that's the priority. The food is just a separate vessel to help make it that much more enjoyable so that you're you're like happier and more satisfied as you have these deep connections so my goal is to make your relationship with cooking be one of joy so that you're not showing up to the table cranky and and bitter that you you you're oh your cake didn't come out well well you should have followed my recipe because it's pretty easy exactly what about because the dinner you know, you're gathering people at a table do you have an ideal just in your opinion an ideal size for a dinner party Depends on my social battery. I would say typically, to me, six is great. Six is great. Oftentimes, I'm an eight to 10 kind of guy. Invite eight, 10 always end up showing up. And then it's like this, like I, in a couple of days, like I have like my two best friends, haven't seen them in a hot second. We're like, no one's allowed to invite anyone else. Don't tell anyone. It's just the three of us. That's it. Did you have any do's and don'ts if someone's throwing a dinner party? Um, don't show up empty handed. At the same time, be creative. Like I will always say just bring yourselves because I don't want people to bring food. At the same time, I will also tell people I don't drink. Every, like my roommates don't drink. Like it's one of those things where it's like you like bring something else. Like it's, it's, it's really not that hard. Bring like, like, just like find something cute. I think at the end of the day, be thoughtful, whatever happened to being thoughtful and bringing a host gift. That's like, not just the baseline basic ass, like whatever was the easiest thing to do. It's like, if you love someone, it's like, show them how appreciative you are. I'm not saying do it with like money. I'm not saying it has to be expensive, but like go to your favorite, like, I don't know, your favorite shop and bring up, bring your favorite little snack or, or, Go to your like the florist and like these are the flowers I really love. Like just do something that shows like thank you. I have a real problem with showing up empty handed. Like I was just I agreed. Like it's just my thing too. Like I don't care. I will. It's goyish. It's yeah. No, I don't care how late I am. It's like I just it's it makes me. And then I show up and I'm like no one is bringing anything. This is so weird to me. But. I agree. It's just my, even if you're just inviting me over to like have a drink before we go out for a night and we're going to be at your house for like 20 minutes, I feel weird. It's just my thing. So I totally understand that. 
What about, I went to a dinner party recently. It's someone that's in the public eye, so we don't need to mention who it is. And the dinner party was great. Name them. Name them. <laughs> name them. Well, yes, Miss Sutton Strack over there. We want to name everyone. Give me some, give me some hints. Well, it was, you know, in the housewife's world and it wasn't in, it was out in the Hamptons and someone showed up and it turns out that they had food allergies and they could eat a lot of things and they could not eat most things. And this was never told to the host. And it became like, it didn't really become a thing, but it became a thing. Like the host felt a certain way. This person wasn't really eating anything. What advice? I don't have any food allergies, but what do you have for people that are either picky eaters or have food allergies? I always ask. I do always ask, but I will say I ask mainly for the, like the picky eaters. So like things that you do hate, things that you, you love, things that you don't like, things that you're allergic to. That's my go-to. However, if you have a lot of allergies, not just things you don't like, but allergies, that's on you to convey. Like, come on, like, what, you think someone's a mind reader? Like, that that's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. That's on that person. I'm sorry. I agree with you. I'm like, how is this not uh, brought up and now you're hungry and you can't really eat anything? Like, when was that going to be brought up? Do you, are you a, you know, are you, when you go to a dinner party or you go out to eat, are you critical of food or do you just turn it off? I mean, I'm critical of food, but are you, or you just turn it off and that's your profession? I and mean, you're just... yes and no. I mean, I don't, I don't like, I don't need it to be fancy. I just like, I'm looking to meet things as they are. So it's like, if it's not going to be like really good, then I'm not going to waste my time on it. Like, and then I just like, all right, give me like. Some grilled chicken and a, and a salad and I'll be great. Like give me a give me a grilled chicken Caesar salad. I'm happy. I'm totally. fine. I don't I don't need it to be like crazy. What I do know is like know your know your environment and know when not to get like the paella at some place where you know it's gonna be disgusting. Right. I split my time between New York and LA. Like just curious, what are your favorite New York restaurants these days? everything i like it all depends on neighborhood i'm i will say i'm more of a i'm more of a lady who lunches than like a dinner person i prefer to have dinner at home uh but i'm newly to the upper west side so i'm always at barney greengrass uh i love schlepping to williamsburg my probably my favorite restaurants in williamsburg between like laser wolf or gertie i always get a cafe pana for ice cream and gramercy or greenpoint i love uh I love Finney Pizza in Williamsburg. I love Loring Place downtown, ABC Kitchen. I used to work at, so I'm like super close with like that vibe. A little bit of everything. Those are good. Um, there's a Finney Pizza in Amagansett now, and it was a whole big thing when it opened. Yes. Sure. It's phenomenal. What about the opposite? What New York, you know, some restaurants are so hard to get into. They're so hyped. What do you think is overhyped in the New York restaurant scene these days? Um, the thing is, if it's over, if it's like hyped up, I'm not going. I don't, I don't want to 